Hey there guys, today I'm back with another simple DIY style rainwater harvesting project. As many of you know, we have recently acquired a wild Mustang that my daughter is training and monsoon season is just probably a week away so the timing couldn't be more perfect uh, so in this video i'm going to show you how to set up a simple ibc tote water harvesting system with a first flush and uh, anyway so i'm going to show you how to set that up and then i will give you a little tour or demo and leave you off with some closing comments So while the primary purpose of this video is to show how to direct rainwater off of a structure such as this through some piping and into some tanks so that you can utilize it on whatever you want to use it for, I figured I'd talk real quick about the platform that you'll see me setting these IBC totes on because it is maybe a bit overkill from what you truly need. You could simply accomplish the same goal by stacking up uh, center blocks, which I've done in previous videos before or also building some sort of framework with landscape timbers and just building the soil up. Or you could use something uh, like old railroad ties that would definitely be strong enough. But as you know from previous projects, I have a lot of this old movie theater steel, which is three inch by three inch by quarter inch thick angle. And these were the last few big pieces that I had with the exception of this one. This is a new piece. Um, so that's why I have it set up in the manner that I do. But just so you know, you don't have to have something fancy like this. Uh, the other options I mentioned will work just as well. Four inches, three inches. Right now I've got all the pieces fit together and lined up just how I want them. You'll notice I glued the middle section where it is holding the first flush pipe because that's going to be holding quite a bit of weight. But the inlet side where the gutter is and the little outlet arm that goes into the IBC, 
Uh, that is just dry fit so that I can be able to move them, remove an IBC tote as I need. And right now I'm gonna disassemble this, paint it to protect it from the sun, and I'll reinstall it. I'm gonna add a little screened inlet on the uh, elbow that is coming from the gutter, and I'll then add the other IBC tote, connect the piping down below, and give you a little demo. Here are the PVC fittings I'm going to be using to connect these IBC totes at the outlet valves so that the water will flow between them, they will self-level, and also this will enable me to have a valve so that I can let this water flow either straight into a bucket or to a water or wherever I want the water to go after being collected in the tanks. So I have two elbows, one T, these are all one inch fittings, one quarter turn valve, and then I have a two inch to one inch threaded connection to slip connection with this one inch adapter. And then these will be connecting to these IBC tote couplers. Uh, my friend Justin gives these when he sells his IBC totes. It, and it enables you to connect the PVC to this. And then once you have your PVC assembly, these little toggle handles allow it to be fully removed in case you need to do maintenance or uh, switch the IBC totes out. Uh, they're just a quick connection. And then I've got uh, a cutter, some glue, and I have a length of one inch PVC pipe. These two inch to one inch adapters are glued. I'm adding some Teflon tape to the threaded ends of these quick couplers. And the thing I always remember when I'm adding Teflon tape is that I want it to spin in the same way that I'm gonna be turning the coupling so that the tail of the tape is facing away from the spin and it won't bind up. And if you follow that, it should work out pretty easy every time you do it. But sometimes you'll get it messed up. As long as you have enough, it'll probably be just fine. Now with both of these connected, I'm gonna put these on the totes and I'm gonna do all the rest of my PVC work while they're connected to the totes so I can get everything lined up. Now that everything is glued, I'm going to show you how everything will disconnect with those uh, quick couplers. And I'm going to go paint this to protect it from the sun and then I'll reassemble it with the other PVC and do a few other little things and I'll show you how it all works. This tour is going to be rather quick because this system is rather simple. Pretty much everything that this system is comprised of is seen in this shot. Essentially it is just a pipe from a gutter to the IBC tote and along the way the dirty water gets trapped in a first flush pipe and that is pretty much it. So starting from the gutter the rainwater flows out of the gutter into this inlet pipe. You can see I added a screened piece of metal mesh and that is just to keep out the larger leaves and other debris. The water then travels down, drops into this uh, teed section and into a first flush pipe. Uh, all of the dirty water gets trapped down there and there's a little plastic ball that floats up and it gets caught in this uh, necked down section. 
I might just add some of my explanation for my goat water um, further on how that works, but that is essentially what happens. The ball then traps all the dirty water below and the clean water uh, continues on in this pipe into the IBC tote. And then these front pipes, as you saw me connect earlier, they allow the water to flow between this pipe so that the water level stays level between the totes and ultimately can be hooked to an automatic water or a pump house or in this case i'm just going to simply add a hose or a bucket so that i can fill up the horse water time i do this i just uh, add a few little screws in these joint areas that are going to hold a bit of weight and uh, they don't need to be completely watertight because this is just gonna fill up uh, with water from time to time and eventually drain out. Uh, but I figured I'd just make note of that since a joint like this is holding quite a bit of weight in this long piece of uh, four inch pipe. And for a little bit more info on the first flush, for those of you who hadn't seen my last rainwater harvesting install, uh, the bottom of this first flush pipe has a threaded cap and within this tube is a little black uh, plastic ball that floats up with the water level and seals right at that connection where the PVC pipe goes down to the smaller diameter. And that is kind of what keeps the floaties and other stuff uh, the silty water from kind of intermingling with the hopefully clean water that's eventually going to make it into here. All right, guys, well, I think that's pretty much going to do it for this very simple and basic rain rotor harvesting system. You've seen me set similar systems up on my goat barn and for my wildlife water and uh, my old rain roof uh, rain rotor garden project. And there's really not a whole lot that it takes to set something up like this. And even in this case, it's probably a bit more fancy than it truly needs to be. You simply just need to stick a pipe up to a gutter, direct the water into a, a tank, and then utilize it on your garden or whatever else you want to. Uh, if you're gonna use it for consumption, I'd recommend filtering it, uh, but it is not something that needs to be super complex. Uh, a couple of things I do wanna cover because I know somebody's gonna bring up why I haven't painted or covered these. Um, well, the quick answer to that, um, as I mentioned when I did my goat water, um, is that I probably will paint this. Um, I have painted probably about five in the past. And I've had mixed results. Uh, three of them came out really well, and, and uh, a couple others, the paint's been chipping. They were all Rust-Oleum paint, so maybe I will get one of those uh, IBC tote covering uh, little things that covers the tank. Uh, because obviously, uh, with light infiltration, you are going to get algae and stuff like that. But it's not really that much of an issue. When I do clean these out, I just use the jet nozzle on the hose, 
kind of put my arm in there and spray around, you can knock all the big stuff off. And so I'm just not going to sweat it. And right now it's totally fine. And I also did not want it covered so that you could see the uh, bluish color of the water in there because I think it kind of looks cool. Also, I do want to, or I did want to point out, I think I probably put a little thing at the bottom. Uh, but I get a lot of you guys asking me where I get my IVC totes and I get them from my friend Justin. He's up in the Tucson area. He has a company called Arizona Sustainable Living. He does uh, IVC totes, rain barrels, old military surplus stuff, uh, industrial things. Basically, it's a pretty cool place to go and visit. Uh, you'll probably go there for this and you'll end up uh, leaving with something uh, completely unexpected or unplanned for but uh, anyway super nice guy and uh, he's got the best prices that I've ever found for these and every time I get one like these these are potable water uh, quality they don't smell like anything he has them all cleaned out they're great quality but I've also gotten other totes that are you know maybe they held paint or something like that and I use them for a trash trailer uh, or for other projects. So he's got every type of tote and every quality level that you might want, depending on what you might be wanting to do, whether it's rainwater harvesting or, you know, who knows what. I've used these things for so many uh, different things. And actually, speaking of that, I'm going to be doing a uh, little goat carrier uh, project at some point, uh, showing you what I did with one of these to transport goats. Uh, so I think I'm just rambling on right now. Um, as for videos that are coming up i've got another rainwater harvesting one um, for those of you who like my uh, whole house uh, home collection system i'm going to be rebuilding my pump house and the next video uh, because i have the old pump house uh, taken down i'm going to show you how my pump and pressure tank works uh, since i never really gave a good look at that when i originally did those videos because my old pump house was really teeny tiny and it was dark and cobwebs and it just was kind of hard to get good footage with the camera in there so now it's as exposed and it'll look uh, it'll be easier to follow on camera so anyway i think that is it so as always appreciate you watching give me a thumbs up and uh until i see you next time i wish you all of god's blessings and uh <laughs> his wisdom and discernment in this crazy world we live in see ya